Welcome to section 17 of the Grand Tour of Northumberland. On this section we'll be looking at castles and bastels. So join us on section 17. Daly Castle is quite possibly the oldest surviving hall house in Northumberland and most likely built by a Scottish nobleman called David Lindsay in the early 13th century. It was confiscated twice by the Crown in 1289 and 1296 and given to John de Swinburne. Upon his death it reverted back to the Crown in 1326 where it was described as having been burnt by Scots. By 1604 it was still held by the Crown but occupied by the Dodds family but was in ruin by the 18th century and plundered for stone in the early 19th century. The walls were 1.8 meters thick. Pretty impressive. So it reminds of a tower there, doesn't it? This here is Dally Castle Mill. It was a late 17th century corn mill and most likely operated until the early 20th century. Below this bridge is a section of the Border Counties Railway and after just crossing the railway that gate there is where we go towards Tarsic Castle. When we get to this gate, Tarsic Castle is just over there. Just a short little trespass to have a look. This here is a defensive ditch. It wasn't actually a moat though. Although it does look like one. Tarsic Castle was a fortified house originally that protected two fords, one on the Tarsic Burn and the other on the North Tyne. The house was fortified in 1267 by John Common, who was given license to crenellate his residence. It's the earliest surviving license to crenellate a residence in Northumberland. In 1523, the castle was occupied by Sir Ralph Fenwick, along with 80 men, but it was taken and burned by Scots in 1525. In 1773, it existed as a rectangular building with four turrets on either corner, surrounded by a wall and a ditch. However, by 1825 it had been plundered for stone. In 1888 an excavation of the site found an underground stone passage containing a bronze key and a sword. Torsa Tor, Backpackers Hostel, Bunkhouse Buffy's Rooms. And that's that building over there where we turn left. There's the Torsa Tor. 
This is where we leave the main road and follow this country lane. <laughs> so the Daft of the Brush Constipation Care Walk, the River Tyne Trail, goes that way. However, because we're wearing trainers and the weather hasn't been very good and it's very muddy, we're going to be just following the road. It goes to the same place. This here is Forney Burn Station. It forms part of the Border Counties Railway, which was opened in 1861 and closed in 1956. There's a very late raspberry. <laughs> There's quite a few of them, but most of them have passed the sell by. I would eat it myself, but I know my daughter loves them, so I'm going to give it to her. Old Hall Farm is the site of a 16th or 17th century bastel with walls that are a metre thick. It was altered in 1830 to more or less what's there now. Well, unfortunately, can't see anything. Yeah, I think that's the best view I can get of the farm. Can't really see anything at all. That's looking across the North Tyne Valley. My original route would have gone through those trees right over there on the top there. Wow, some nice views looking into the North Tyne Valley there. Really nice. Pays sometimes to look backwards. Dongley Wood Bastow was a 17th century peel tower that was owned by William Dodd in 1684. The walls were 1.5 and 1.7 metres thick. It's now partially incorporated into the two buildings on either side of it. So back on the daft as a brush trail, which is that direction, but on section 21 we come back this way and we follow the reverse off-road route which goes up that way. This is one of the best things about hiking in Northumberland, all the wild bilberries. There's loads of them here. Some late bluebells as well. Oh, they're lovely, them ones. They're nice and sweet. You see this all here? These are all wild raspberries. There's a late one left there. But it's past the season for raspberries now, like. Now yeah. well, we're going underneath this bridge by the looks of it. This is an old railway bridge. We're entering Falston now. I'm not going to talk too much about this place because we'll be doing it in section 21. Right now, what we're after is a drink from the Black Cock. You look going forward for some Black Cock, Neil? <laughs> the Black Cock. <laughs> We got the black cock in. Looks very cute. Let's couple. go in. Yeah. You got a couple? <laughs> I think so. Yes. 
So we've slaked out our first at the black cock. How was that, you Neil? You enjoyed the black cock? <laughs> I did, yeah, it was really good. I recommend it. The food looks good, of course, and uh, sorry, not so many of you angels. So. <laughs> you should have heard me earlier. This is the overflow from the dam. Them walls must be strong. So we're at Kiela Reservoir, nearly at the end of my walk and it's very, very windy. Uh, Kiela Reservoir work started here in 1975 and it was completed in 1981. It took a full two years to fill with water. So that's Kielder Tower sticking out of the reservoir there. Possibly a good place to go for a zombie apocalypse. And then that's looking down the North Tyne Valley. So that's the end of section 17. So Neil, what did you think of that? Uh, yeah, that was good. Uh, <laughs> I'm not taking a strop today, which is always a good thing. Uh, nice walk, a nice pub along the way, the Black Cock Inn. Uh, it's a good walk, really enjoyed it. About, what was it, 10, 12 miles in the end? 10 miles, wasn't it? About 10, say, yeah, say 10. The watch stopped uh, counting the miles after, after a while, um, actually, after a pint in the pub, I forgot to put it back on, but I think we got to the pub about 10k, so it's not far for that. So yeah, uh, about 10 miles. So yeah, good walk, decent walk, a lot of road work, very different to the walk uh, last time we went out in section, I think it was 16 we were on, because that was just like hell on earth. <laughs> um, but yeah, back to normal now. So yeah, there was a lot of road work on this one. In fact, it was all road work. <laughs> It was possible not to do some road work, um, but considering how much road work was involved, I couldn't see the point in wearing boots. It was much easier just to wear trainers and do the entire thing in road. Uh, it was okay. It was uh, some points of interest, a couple of castles, some ruined bastels, nothing spectacular, but it was more of a connecting walk to get to Kielder Dam. Um, the original walk I had planned was on the other side of the river and it was going through the woods but I got some advice that the route I had chosen was really badly overgrown and it would have been pure hell to do it. Plus, it would have just been plantation forest, you know, 10 miles of plantation forest versus 10 miles of open countryside along a country lane. So yeah, it was quite good. So if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment below, hit the subscribe button for the next adventure and share with your friends on social media and I'll catch you in the next one. Size and boxes.